It would constitute a successful season for the Eagles. Oh, I, you know, I think somewhere in between uh, 2022 and 2023, it doesn't have to be right back to being in the Super Bowl and feeling like we've got this juggernaut. Look, Nick yes, Sirianni, I know, has spent time this offseason and really late last season trying to figure out from a chemistry point standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, what this team is missing. It's not just the talent on the field. It's the chemistry and the cohesiveness in the locker room. So getting back to there, I think, is a good baseline. And once they do that, this team should be, once again, one of the ones that we should be watching, not only in the NFC East, but throughout the entire conference. Yeah. So I'm, wa I'm watching their preseason game, and at the half, Sirianni and those guys are walking into the locker room, and you hear the fans saying, Bill Belichick's going to have your job next season. Uh, why, why do you believe, and I know we talked about this in our pre-show meeting, yep. Nick Sirianni's probably under most pressure of any coach. Because there's so much talent on yeah. this football team. It's so very clear that they should be in the upper echelon of any team in the league. And it was clear a year ago. Even when they were on their win streak, we would watch this offense, we would see this team, and something was always missing. You see it in the chemistry, you see it in the sideline dust-ups, you hear it in the post-game press conference, and that all points to leadership. So that's why his seat is so hot, that if this team can't be successful, a team with almost no holes, then yeah, that you have to point to coaching because we clearly understand we have more than enough talent to be competitive and more than enough talent to finish a season. Okay, first off, I agree with what he's saying there, but the earlier comment about that they're somewhere between 21 and 26, I think, or 21 and 22, I think he said, where they don't have to get back to the Super Bowl. Of course, yes, they do. It is largely seen that the Eagles have an absolute stacked roster. Stacked roster. Okay, and the Eagles believe, especially the fans, believe that Jalen Hurts is the top quarterback in the NFL. And if you have a stacked roster with a top quarterback in the NFL, and you went to the Super Bowl a couple years prior and just lost, anything short of getting back to that Super Bowl, and dare I even say winning it, the the Eagles fans and even the organization as a whole is not going to be happy. They're not going to be happy returning to the Super Bowl. Let's say they return to the Super Bowl or not returning to the Super Bowl. If they don't make it to the NFC Championship game, Sirianni's 1,000% fired. Not a doubt in my mind. He's fired. He's gone. If they don't make the playoffs, like, oh, gosh. I mean, they're going to, I mean, it, it, they'll light that team on fire. If they make it to the NFC Championship game and lose to the 49ers, lose to the Packers, they'll see it as them going backwards now or that other teams have caught up to them like the Packers, like the Lions. If they make it to the Super Bowl, and let's say they lose to the Chiefs again, it's going to be, what do we have to do to get past the Chiefs? They're, they're, I mean, they're, they're just going to be furious about that. If it's not the Chiefs, and let's say now it's the Texans or the Ravens, it's going to be, how could you lose to any other team? We could at least, maybe it's okay to lose to the Chiefs because the Chiefs are a dynasty. It's Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes. What are you going to do? It's just bad luck to face, to, to be a great team in the same time as another great team. Not unlike the Chicago Bears, the Lakers. Philly had that experience with the Sixers and the Lakers. Like even famously Shaq said, Allen Iverson would have a championship if it was if, if he, they played any other team but him and the Lakers which I think is accurate. And so the Eagles have incredibly high expectations. They are top three in playoff wins in the last 25 years. And if all they do is just need to win like another playoff game, and then they're back to top two in the last 25 years. And it's they're only behind the literal dynasty of the New England Patriots with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick who were able to just rip off win after win after win. So that's a pretty high bar. Let's be serious here. So the Eagles have incredibly high expectations. Um, they are they are top in the NFL in playoff wins. They're, and again, in the last 25 years, they're top in the NFL for um, NFC championship games, NFC championship titles, just conference titles, that is. Um, not just at NFC. Super Bowl appearances. Um, cause someone tried to say, oh yeah, the Eagles, they only have one Super Bowl. They're not that good. They don't have that high expectations. And it's like, yes, they do. 
you realize like i think it's something like eight teams still haven't even like been to a super bowl or something like that i forget what it is I forget what the, it's either they haven't been to a super bowl they've never won a super bowl like winning super bowls is difficult we think unless you have like five super bowls like you're not good which is just like absurd and again i'm looking at it through a window of like the last 25 years I don't care what happened in like the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. Uh, it was a different football. It was a different era. Different everything. Different rules. Different style of play. Different coaches. Different players. Different owners. Different GMs. Different fan bases. Teams either existed or they didn't exist. They were in different cities. I mean, it's just different. It's just completely different. Go watch a game from 1982. Let me know uh, what that looks like to you. So yeah, the Eagles have incredibly high standards and they expect to win. They expect to win playoff games and they expect this team, when you are this stacked at, at the, you know, for their team, which a lot of people, especially unbiased people will have this roster top two, top three, top four in the NFL. Well, then you better play like it. You better get to that, uh, at the minimum, NFC Championship game. Anything short of an NFC Championship game would essentially be just like they would sound the alarm. And so, of course, this question is, is Nick Sirianni under the most pressure of any coach in the NFL? Yes. Because I think he has a legitimate chance at keeping his job. Like, you can make the argument of like a McCarthy, but like, I don't think, I don't think the Cowboys have any chance at reaching the Super Bowl or winning the Super Bowl. So I don't think there's any chance that McCarthy like keeps his job. And if he does, then he was never really at risk to lose it. Then, you know, then, then, then Jerry Jones was always going to kind of keep him. Uh, Sirianni. Again, I think he has to just get, he has to get to the Super Bowl. Um, because I'm just trying to think if he loses in the NFC championship game, it'll most likely be to the Packers where it'll be obvious that he's being outcoached by Matt LaFleur. If he plays against the 49ers and loses, it'll be obvious that Shanahan is outcoaching him. If they lose to the Lions, you know what I mean? Like it'll just it'll be like how how can you lose this NFC Championship game? There's the only saving grace potentially would be the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, losing to the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl because it's like, well, you're going up against Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. Like what do you, like what do you who are you going to fire? Who are you going to hire now that can beat them? Maybe Bill Belichick, but I don't know about that. I don't know if the, I don't know if Philly actually legitimately seriously wants Bill Belichick. I, I don't know if there's a lot of belief in Bill. I'm not, I'm not so sure about that. So yeah, the Eagles are definitely in an interesting situation. Um, I think they definitely have to start off strong. Um, because if they start off slow, even if it's like two and two um one and two like it'll be potentially very disruptive because then they'll keep saying oh they've now lost you know 10 of their last 12 game you know they'll, they'll continue from last season or whatever um and then that'll continue to stack nick sirianni will be under fire from the philadelphia media we know philly has a is a an insane amount of you know uh media presence uh, fans will be calling for his head. It it'll it could potentially get ugly quickly. So they definitely have to win, and they have to convincingly win, right? They ha- it can't be like what it was last year, where they were ten and one, but for the most part, it was like uh, they're not looking too good. Yeah, they're winning, and yeah, they're ten and one, but like they could have been like four and ten, four and eleven, five and eleven, six and whatever. So they got to start off strong. They got to show that they've turned this page. Jalen Hurts has to make some major strides forward and they have to be legitimate contenders. And I believe they are, to be clear. I feel like I probably said maybe a lot of negative things, but I absolutely believe that the Philadelphia Eagles are legitimate contenders. I do think they have a stacked roster. I do think Jalen Hurts can get to work. I do believe in Kellen Moore. I do believe in Fangio. Um, And I do believe that they will win the division. They're going to have a home playoff game. Um, I think it'll be. I think the bye will be will be will be a toss up between the Packers, the 49ers, the Eagles, um, the Lions, 
I, I think like it, I think it's going to be very close amongst those teams, quite frankly. Um, and that's where it's going to be interesting. It's going to be which quarterback proves to be the better quarterback in that moment, which coach proves to be able to out potentially coach the other coach. Like, I mean, I, I think those four teams have the potential to be really brutal amongst each other's. Um, you know, fortunately for the Eagles, the Lions and the Packers have to play each other, uh, and, you know, obviously within the division. So that might be able to bode well for them. Um, but then again, you know, as Colin Cowherd has talked about, the Rams could be a dark horse team that he believes will be real strong. He actually believes that they're going to make it to the a NFC championship game. Um, the Commanders should be a tougher team. The Cowboys always play the Eagles tough, whether, you know, uh, in, the, in the last, what, six games? I, well, with Jalen Hurts, they're three and three. So they, they split. Uh, or with Jalen, no, Jalen Hurts is one and one, I think. I forget. But it, they split it, whatever it is. Um, the Eagles and the Cowboys typically often split. Um, and now, like I said, the Commanders should be a tougher team. So those might not be gimme wins. Um, I think the Giants should be wins. If you're not beating the Giants, then, then the Eagles are going to be in trouble, quite frankly, as proven from last season. So, yeah, but I do think, I do think um, the, the road is bright for the Eagles this season, and I do uh, predict that they are going to be a top team in the NFC, and I do think that they have legitimate Super Bowl potential. Um, whether they can win the Super Bowl or not, that's a whole different conversation because I do believe in a lot of other teams. Um, I, I do believe in the Texans. Uh, I, I do believe, um, honestly, I, I have a belief in a lot of teams this season, you know, not even just NFC versus AFC. I do believe in the Lions. I do believe in the Packers. I do believe in the, the Texans, as I said. Like, I, I just think that there are a lot of great teams and so much of it is going to come down to very little things. Who's the healthiest you know, I, I, we always say health matters and it's, people say, oh, you could say about any team, but you can't always say that no matter, sometimes no matter how healthy a team, it doesn't matter. Um, and sometimes no matter how injured a team is, they can still find a way. Um, I think when you're talking about teams that are so good and so competitive and so close to one another, the little things will matter. You know, are the Packers down, you know, they're starting safety that now Jalen Hurts can attack, right? Um is an offensive lineman missing for the Lions that's now, you know, they're able to get to Jared Goff and disrupt him more regularly, right? Is Lane Johnson having a lingering, you know, abdominal injury that now they can attack him for the 49ers, right? I think it's just going to be these little, little things that could end up having big um, repercussions like we saw in the Super Bowl with Greenlaw, and, you know, and the 49ers versus the Chiefs. His replacement got attacked, they got demolished. That's the Super Bowl right there. And even that was just enough just to win in overtime. That I mean, that, that that's we're talking inches here. So the littlest things can really add up. So I can't wait. We are so, so close. A week and a half away or so from real football. No more speculation. Let's go. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think? Do you think, what do you think the actual realistic expectations are for the Philadelphia Eagles? Do you believe that they just have to like, I guess, have some playoff success apparently? Or do you think that they actually have to reach a Super Bowl, win a Super Bowl, whatever it may be? And do you think Nick Sirianni is under the most pressure of any coach in the NFL? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.